Hey, what is up, guys? Guitar Rock here. Welcome back to another counter side video. All right, this is for global server. So, if you guys are not aware, we have plenty of the updates coming in yesterday. Uh, I did pull for a Awaken Yuna, did pull for Harap, and I decided to skip Serapel. And a lot of you guys were asking, Hey, Guitar Rock, why do you skip Serapel? Now, my global account is going to be very. I try to focus on both, like both PvP and PvE. So, if you are someone that do not care about PvP at all, so you don't really play PvP that much, Harap can be skipped. Alright, Harap is not going to be used in PvE. Uh, not to say that she's unusable or she's extremely bad, it's just that there's no um, incentive to really use her, there's no stage that you gotta like use her to be able to win stage. She is someone that steals units and in most PvE stage, you, you don't really need that. But in PvP, that's what makes her so strong. It's like, I feel like she is so strong in PvP that even if you play a little bit of PvP as a casual player, you gotta have her. And the opportunity is right now available for everyone in Global Server right now. I feel like Harap is gonna be have a lot more impact in my honest opinion than Serapel for more, most players. Because Serapel, she is still a little bit gear dependent, she is still a little bit, um, what do you call this, level dependent, contrary to people's belief. Harap is not. It's like you whip one time, boom. Harap, you can put any gears on her. Like, you don't really need insane gears. Like, right now, I'm running, running crit damage on her. Ideally, you want to go for skill haze if you can for her to use her skills more often, right? But the idea here is like, you can see, like, right now, I am, you know, I don't have a skill haze right now, for, unfortunately. So, this is what I went with. But yeah, uh, the idea here is if you think, if you have spare tickets, should you pull for Harap? I honestly think you should, like, you might not care for PvP now, but in the future, the moment you start caring for PvP at all, you're going to see the impact of this character right here. In the future, there's going to be so many units that have summon units, not just Awaken Yuna, right? We're going to have like soldiers, like Replacer King and stuff. We're going to have Blue Bridge Mark II. And then if you guys haven't seen uh, the latest video that I posted just now, Awaken, uh, the new Awakened Soldier in KR unit have like summon units alongside with him. So you can see how useful Harap is. She's probably a unit that's gonna stay in the meta in PvP for a very, very long time. So if you can afford to pull for her, do consider it. I think at the end of the day, uh, if you don't have her, you're handicapping yourself. You're putting yourself as a, you know, minus against the enemy. Let's showcase a few Harap matches and tell you guys a little bit about uh, Harap and Awaken Yuna interaction and how to, you know, play against them or, you know, counter each other. Let's jump into it. Alright, so let's do some Harap Showcase and show you guys a battle uh, yesterday. So this is an Awaken Yuna enemy. So I start off with Awaken Lee Suyon. I mean, no, just a regular Lee Suyon. What did I say, Awaken? Alright, you can see Yuna when... Okay, this is not... This is probably not a very good deployment from the enemy. Alright, so why is it not good? Because Yuna is very front. If Yuna is front, the bird is front. So there's no reason for Yuna to be this front, right? Serapel is here, why not put Yuna somewhere here? Now you will see why that is not uh, ideal, because now I can put a Harap. Notice I place a Shion and then I place my Harap immediately after, so that's just to get the Kim Hana Operator because a Ranger to support her, right? So I don't want to just put Harap first, then I don't have a way to activate Kim Hana. So notice now the bird is so front, right? So Harap's distance is just perfect, Harap is going to hit and whip and hit the bird and steal the bird from the enemy. So the idea here is, Harap will always hit the most front enemy, in this case Serapel, but she's next to Yuna. If Serapel is let's say here, Harap would hit here and might miss the bird. But because Serapel is here next to Yuna, so Harap easily, look at that, I walk forward and I did hit the bird. And now notice what happened. Uh, pay very close attention to the bird. The bird is actually hitting the enemy. I know it's a little bit laggy, now you can see, now Yuna is turning right. She's facing the other, she's fighting her own bird. She's literally, now she is hitting her own bird, the bird is hitting her. Okay, so keep in mind the confusion only lasts for a few seconds. I think the bird recover right there. Uh, the confusion doesn't last forever. But this is how you can see, you can steal the bird from the enemy. Um, Harap is really strong in countering the Yuna meta. Right, for sure. If you know how to use... Hopefully, you know, when I make videos like this, you can learn from being a Harap user and also from being an Awakened Yuna 
a user, right? How to deploy it correctly. Because if you are an Awaken Yuna player, you are using Awaken Yuna in PvP, you want to be careful a little bit with your deployment. There's lots of ways that you can counter Harap still. You can use your own Harap to steal the bird back. You can also use a Shiyun to counter Harap, right? And you know, you can also have a Kang in the backup. Hopefully, if you see Harap, you push her back. That can also be a thing that you can do. You sacrifice your Kang. Your Kang is the one that will get Kang and a Stronghold is the one that will get stolen by Harap, right? Will get confused by Harap, but your bird is safe. And that is, in most cases, a much better trade. All right, let's have a look at one more uh, player right here. So this one is a new Ohio with Elizabeth and stuff. Okay, so new Ohio can be used as well if you want to. If you can silence Harap, that could be a thing. All right, so we're starting off with Lee Suyon and enemy has Asterosa. So I deploy Carl afterwards. You know, now the new Ohio straight up went with silencing me. I'm not sure if that is the approach because you're silencing in the case and uh, that, and then you use Yuna afterwards. That's a bit weird. I think he should have deployed a Yuna first and again you can see the Yuna is in front now. So now I place Harap. Right, notice I place Harap. I'm going to start whipping the, the bird. Harap is going to whip, hit Elizabeth, hit the bird. Right? And now the bird has been stolen. The bird is on my side. So that's something that you gotta be very careful. Uh, I see a lot of players doing this. They put Yuna in front. Yuna is not a... S okay, here's the thing, right? I understand that a lot of people, they look at role. They look at the role defender, striker. They take it very seriously. Look at Awaken Yuna as a ranger. Don't look at her as a striker. Alright, place her how you would place a ranger. Yes, sometimes she would walk to the front. But if she walks to the front, it's fine. It's not your fault, right? Rather than you deploying her in front. But treat Awaken Yuna as a ranger. Do not... You never place your Gion or Kalwong in front, right? So you want to treat her that way. So that's how ideally you want to use her. She's not Awaken Hilde. She's not Awaken Mina. You gotta understand that not all strikers are built the same. You will understand this later on. I think Awaken Yuna is the first utility-based striker or Awaken unit that doesn't fit that role perfectly. Uh, you will understand more later on. For example, there's a lot of characters later on like uh, Awaken Evolve 1, which is a defender, but he's not like a defender. He's not like someone that goes in front. Replacer King, defender, but he's not someone that goes in front. You, you guys will understand. I think uh, there's still a lot of new players in Global, so hopefully uh, this video can bring attention to that. Like, you want to treat Awaken Yuna not as a striker, but she's much more of a somebody that stays at the back, right? Like like a ranger, sort of. You guys will get used to it. I think like the more mistakes you make, the more you'll learn and eventually you'll understand that she's not supposed to always be in front. She's kind of squishy. So she's meant to die very fast. But then again, she's strong because of what uh, the bird can provide. So for now, if you think that she's too squishy, I would highly advise going for HP sets on her. So HP sets is going to be something that you want to consider giving her. So let me show you guys uh, this Awaken Yunas that I'm fighting against. I feel like their gears, uh, you can see attack speed is not something you want to give her. Like I think a lot of people, they view Yuna as uh, a striker like like Chifuyu or like Awaken Mina where, where she's in front and doing damage. So they go and give her uh, attack speed set. This is not something that you want to you want to give her. Like in terms of skill haze, uh, I do see a lot of players putting skill haze on her. Ideally, skill haze is not too bad. Uh, skill haze is actually her best in slot, but the problem is not many people have the Gordia skill haze yet, and she can feel a bit squishy. Like this is like the regular skill haze, and again, most players in global might not have the the best uh, Gordia skill haze, hummingbird maze Gordia, the Huma Gogor skill haze, right? So, and that's something that you want to opt for. Uh, she's eventually that's going to be her BIS in my honest opinion. So that's something that if you don't think you can get there yet. Going for HP is going to be the second best option in my opinion. So yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think of Awaken Yuna if you guys have been using her in PvP or in PvE. As always, if you haven't already subscribed, give this video a like. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye.